This is something called integration by parts, the tabular method. It's actually a shortcut to that UV minus integral VDU format that we use for integration by parts. The thing is, this shortcut does not always work. OK, but when it does work, it is a pretty nice thing. So I need to share that with you there. We'll use that quite a bit, but we need to know that other video there. That's the main thing that always works for us, that UV minus integral VDU. So let me just share with you the nuts and bolts of how the shortcut works. And then I'll talk about when you're allowed to use that shortcut right there. So here is the tabular method shortcut to integration by parts. What you do is you make yourself a little chart, a little table, a U, U side and a DV side. And I'm gonna let that U be that X cubed. I'm gonna let that DV be the EVX. And when you smush those two original things together, that should equal your original problem. And then what you're gonna do on this side, the U side, is you're gonna take a derivative the whole way down. And then on this side, you're going to integrate that. All right, now what you do is you take the derivative all the way down to zero. And so the derivative of X cubed, we're gonna go with 3X squared. We're gonna take the derivative of that to get a six x. We'll take the derivative of that to get a six and we'll take the derivative of that to get a zero. So that's what you do. You take that derivative all the way down to zero. And then on this side, you integrate it however many spots that you got. So you got four spots, that means you gotta integrate that four times. The good news is on this one, when I integrate e to the x, we're gonna get e to the x every single time. But what you need to be careful on is the balancing. Like if I give you an e to the two x right here, you're gonna get e to the 2x, but you gotta balance that two with the one half. And then when you integrate that again, you'll get an e to the 2x, but then you balance it with another one half, so then it becomes a one fourth, and then a one eighth, and then a one over 16. So each time you integrate that, you gotta do that balancing every single time. So be careful with that. And the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna start this with a plus. You gotta handle the signs. You're gonna start this with a plus, and then you're gonna alternate the signs the whole way down. Right, so you always start it with a plus and then you alternate it the whole way down. It's gonna end with whatever it ends with. It depends on how many terms that you got there. And here's how this shortcut works there. So once you do that little chart there, you're gonna do this times this. So that's the thing, it's like this thing times this thing, multiply the diagonal. So you're gonna go this times this with the sign. So a positive x cubed times e to the x. That's your first term. And then you just do that the whole way down. You're gonna go this thing times this thing. So a negative three x squared times this e to the x, and then just keep doing that the whole way down. So you're gonna go this times this, that'll be a positive six x e to the x, and then you're gonna do this thing times this thing, that'll be minus six e to the x, and then you tag on, you got your plus c, and then you're done. If you compare this, this is actually number 13 in the homework. If you compare this with what you did on the prior assignment, and you did that thing a few times a long way, that's what this is right here. Just compare your answers there. We're going to get that same answer, right? So there's kind of like my work there. It's a little bit messy, but I just kind of did that a few times there, got that answer. And if you use your tapping method, the shortcut, you're going to get that same answer. Now, here's the deal. You can't use that. You can only use the shortcut if this U part actually goes down to zero. So if your U is equal to something where that derivative won't go to zero, you cannot use the shortcut on that problem. So for example, if I gave you like x ln of x, all right, you can't do this. You can't set up your chart and then put that as your x and then take that derivative down to zero because there's the thing, you can't have your dv, we stressed that so much in the last video, you cannot have your dv be that ln of x part. You can't integrate that like you can the e to the x and go straight to the answer right here, okay? Um, so you can't use a shortcut on something like that. Sometimes you got like crazy fractions and radicals in the problem, where if your u is a radical or some fraction or some crazy arc trig function or something like that, or a trig function, then you can't always use that shortcut, but it works really well if your U is something like this, where you can just keep taking that all the way down to zero. So something like this, sometimes people make a mistake, they'll put like a one over X right there. They're doing the derivative of that and not the integral of that. So you're doing the derivative of the left side, integral of that right side. So on something like this, if you have X ln of X, you have to let the U be the ln part, and then that DV has to be the other part, and so this derivative, you could take this derivative as many times as you want, it's never going to go to zero. You cannot use the shortcut on this problem. You have to do it like we did before, where you set up your, your, uh, your du here and your v here, and then you use your formula uv minus the integral of v du, right? So do that like you did before. So like I said, you can only use that shortcut when that derivative part goes down to zero. So whenever you can use that, 
go ahead and use that. If I ever tell you to use integration by parts and the shortcut applies, you're allowed to use that shortcut right there. That's the tabular method. All right. That's pretty much all the notes here. The, the day two is just more practice. Sometimes you'll get to use that. Sometimes you can just get the more practice with the day one assignment there with that other formula. Um, there is one example where this shortcut works on that I, was, I, I just a lot of times people make mistakes on this. So, you know, usually I don't add this example in the notes there, but I'm just gonna add in one more example in the notes there just to walk you through this and hopefully that'll be helpful. Um, but I'm actually gonna try this problem with the shortcut. So I'm gonna make a little table here a u part and a dv part. I'm going to let the u be that x squared, and then I'm going to let the dv be that 3x minus 4 to the 1 half. All right. Now, if this was in the bottom, then that's a negative 1 half, because when you smush that together, this should equal your original problem. So if it doesn't, then you change that problem right there. And then I can take this derivative down to 0. I can make this a 2x and then a 2 and then the zero. And then before I forget, I like to do my signs there. So I'll start this with a plus and I'll alternate my signs the whole way down. And then just right here, you gotta think, can I integrate this thing? I actually can integrate that. Now, if I put like a three X squared in there, then it's a little bit trickier there. I can't integrate that with the techniques that we know up until this point there. I'm gonna need something else later on in the chapter there. But so what I'm gonna do is just I'm pretty much going to do a lot of the balancing and stuff in my head kind of goes through there. But if you needed to, you could always go to the side and write more stuff down. You could like write this down, right? Where you can let the U equal the inside of that square root, just a simple U DU right here. And then your DU is equal to that three. You'll balance that with the one third. And then you got the integral of U DU. Then you could integrate that, plug your X's back in and insert that right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some of this stuff in my head. So when I integrate this, I know that the du is equal to just a number. So I know I can do balancing and it's going to be okay here. But I know when my when it's just a number, I know I'm going to have a u to the one half. So I'm thinking about this in my head. When I integrate this, I know I'm going to have that. I'm going to add one to that exponent, right? When I integrate it, I'm going to go to the three halves. Now I'll divide it by three halves, which means I'll times it by the two thirds. But I know that u is equal to that inside. The du is equal to three which means I balance that with the one third right away. So then my next step I write down is a two over nine times that three X minus four to the three halves. And then when you integrate this now, cause you got to integrate it every step of the way. I got two more slots here. I got to integrate this thing. So here's the deal. So now I have, if you wanted to come over to the side and then rewrite that thing and then let your U equal the inside, do your DU and then carry that stuff down. You could always write down more stuff, right? But I'm gonna encourage you just to practice a couple of these in your head and figure that out. Um, so this two ninths as there, that's already part of that. That's like in front of your integral. So that part carries down. And then your U is equal to the inside part. So eventually when you integrate this, you're gonna have a U to the three halves. So when I integrate that, I'm gonna have a U to the five halves I'll divide it by five halves, which means I'll times it by the two fifths. But again, every single time I integrate, my u is equal to that three x minus four, and my du is equal to three every single time I integrate. So if my du is equal to three, that means I'm gonna have to balance that with a one third every single step that I integrate right there. So there's a few things that we got to account for right there. And then you're just gonna get a four over 135 times that three x minus four to the five halves. So a common mistake is a lot of times students forget to balance the one third every single time. Sometimes they forget that fraction. Sometimes they forget to carry down the original fraction, but the most common mistake is they usually remember to carry it down. They usually remember the new fraction from their integral. The, the common mistake is they forget to balance that three with a one third every single time there. So just practice that and it will be good. So if I do this one more time here, I'm gonna have the four over 135 that's automatically there. And then when I integrate a u to the five halves, I'm gonna raise that to the seven halves. I'll divide it by seven halves, which means I'll times it by a two over seven. And then again, my u is equal to the inside, the du is equal to three, which means I'll balance that with a one third one more time there. And then when you do that, plug that stuff into the calculator. All right, so that's really the hardest part of the problem. And now we're just gonna go ahead and just use that little curvy thingy and then do our shortcut. So when I get my answer, I'm gonna take this times this. I think you guys will probably be good here the rest of the way. And then we're gonna go this times this, that's gonna be a minus 8x over to 135. And then we're gonna go this times this.
and then that giant thing is your answer.